అందరికీ నమస్కారం వరంగల్ రాయగాన్ని మనకి కాకతీయులు గుర్తొస్తారు కాకతీయ కాలంలాంటి పాలన వైభవం గుర్తొస్తుంది వరంగల్ రాయగాన్ని వై స్తంభాలు గురి రామప్ప భద్రకాళి దేవాలయం వరంగల్ కోట ఇలా ఎన్నో చార్మిక కట్టడాలు వినిపిస్తాయి దాదాపు మూడు వందల సంవత్సరాల పాటు తెలుగు జాతిని ఏకం చేసి పరిపాలించినటువంటి అద్భుతమైనటువంటి పాలన సామర్థ్యం కాకతీయ పాలన వస్తుంది అయితే గొలుసుబట్టు జరుగులతో తెలంగాణ ప్రాంతాన్ని మాత్రమే కాకుండా దాదాపు దక్షిణ భారతదేశాన్ని మొత్తాన్ని సస్యశ్యామలం చేసినటువంటి ఘనత కాకతీయ చెప్తుంది పదమూడు వందల ఇరవై మూడు తర్వాత కాకతీయ సామ్రాజ్యం అందరించిపోయిందని మనందరం అనుకుంటున్నాం అయితే కాకతీయ కట్టడాలు ఎంతైతే పటిష్టంగా ఎంతైతే దృఢంగా ఉన్నాయో అంతే దృఢంగా అంతే పటిష్టంగా కాకతీయ వారసులు కూడా ఇప్పటికీ ఉన్నారు ఛత్తీస్గఢ్ రాష్ట్రంలోని జగదల్పూర్ కేంద్రంగా ఇప్పటికి ప్రస్తుత మహారాజు మహారాజ శ్రీ కమల్ చంద్ర పంచదేవ్ కాకతీయ గారు ఇప్పటికీ ఉన్నారు సో ఇప్పుడు కాకతీయ కాలం నాటి పాలన విశేషాలతో పాటు బస్తర్ కేంద్రంగా గత గత ఏడు వందల సంవత్సరాల నుంచి పరిపాలిస్తున్నటువంటి పాలకుడు అయితే వీళ్ళని అడిగి ఇక్కడ ఇట్లాంటి కాకతీయ ఆనవాలు ఉన్నాయి కాకతీయ వారసత్వానికి చెందినటువంటి విశేషాలని మనం అడిగి తెలుసుకునే ప్రయత్నం చేద్దాం నమస్తే మహారాజాజీ See, we, we came out from Marangal as the, you know, the documentation proves and as well as the Sheila Ray, the stone inscriptions. They make it very clear that the younger brother of Pratabhadra came here and established his kingdom. The kingdom was established here because I think he came around 9th century here. But the kingdom was established in 1300. And after that we have been living here. And if you see the credit notifications of the, you know, the government of India after the, you know, uh, the merger of the states into the Republic of India. So all my ancestors, like my father, was the recognized of the government of India. He has a recognition stating that he said that Maharaja Bharat Chakra Mandir Kaakti. So somewhere it is very clear that you know, we were the people from you know, Kaakti, Maharaja became the established our kingdom. And with the help of the tribals, then we have respected them and you know, they have respected us as a family. And we have been serving them from past centuries. Maharaja, can you tell us about the famous uh, Vastarka Mahadhanjishwari, which is in Dantavara? Yeah, Dantavara Temple says that he, there, was a, uh, there was a story which was told to us and there was found that the Mata came from Marangal. It was a small girl, she used to play with the king on an Andam Deva. They used to play around and then Andam Deva asked the goddesses that if I want my kingdoms, so what is used to write on a piece of paper to the Bhadra Valley? Say that in Vera Kingdom Mujhe Vapas Diya Jai. It was written in ancient Telugu. And when it was written in ancient Telugu, it was you know, put it on the head of the Mata in the temple. So Mata gave her the blessings and she came back as a girl with the Maharaja. Played with her and when she became matured enough, then she came down from Parangal to Vastar. The story says that when she came down, so Maharaj was a bit worried that will she come or not. He said, I am traveling behind him on a horse and that will have a guru, basically, a guru on the horse. So that you know that I am coming behind you. So we did not have force. So it was a force which was you know, super powerful by the mind and the Shri mind. And <coughs> she came and she said, if you turn behind and see, I will, you know, I will try to sit there. Like, you know, I will be established there and you have to be my priest. So if you turn behind then it will be there. So she told that take my Vastra. So we could not pronounce Vastra because we were from South. So we said Vastra, that turned into Vastra. So that was the history and then when we, then she started to wear the Kundagin, Dantani and Sankani in Dante. The horse went in the river to cross it. So the, the sound stopped. The Maharaj was a bit enthusiastic. He got her that one. So then she turned back to, she established herself in the cave there which is now the temple of the Teshu. And she gave us a blessing that you will become the priest, the head priest to be, uh, to the entire family as well as the entire master. And you will be the main priest to the Teshu. So this is how the story became. Uh, and the Vastra was given to Allah Teva. He established a very big kingdom, which right now has left eight districts. A district and a huge place. And now a lot of, lot of places have been got to Maharashtra and Odisha. It was a huge state and it was a government state by Mother Teshu, which established herself 
and still as we please to her, we are obeying her things which we had promised to her and I do her, I will not please and I offer my prayers to her. Maharaja, uh, we have so many thousands of palaces in India, but I think this is the only palace is treated as a temple. So, and uh, so many thousands of people just to uh, travel uh, thousands of uh, kilometers to just to see you and worship you. So, what is the reason behind it? See, because the temple they treated as a temple because my grandfather, Maharaja Prabhupada, he was shot dead by Congress. There was a big conspiracy when they were the chief minister of the TV shop. He ordered that you know, see and shoot the king. So, there were a lot of people trying to die in the same place. Where we are sitting right now, and there are a lot of people killed. So, after Ravi Maharaj was killed, and he was you know, respected by the people as a god, so they all came here and they used to worship it. So, still it has become like there are certain rooms of the palace which are always open 365 days, if I'm there or not, my family is there or not. But it is always open for the public so that they come and worship. And it has been an honor because we have always fought for the people. And we also, today also, we believe in that. Stand by people, uh, subjects, can be travel, can be not travel. So that that is the thing where it is treated so much respectfully this family. And the word of God, you know, because he was so much powerful Maharashtra that you know he used to talk to the words, that's what the myth says. And that is why you know, he is respected so much in entire master. And I think not in master in Chhattisgarh in India. So people who know him and everybody knows it because of his sacrifice for the places and for the people. That is why it is respected and that's why they treat it as a, as a temple. The Maharani Hospital in Jagadpur, which your ancestors have established, is treating thousands of people for free of cost. So the Maharani Prafula Kumara Devi, Devi uh, who is known as Rani Rudrama Devi of uh, Vastar State. Can you tell us about Maharani? The Maharani was born, she was the only girl. Because you know there was a traditional thing that because it was the British era. That time it was said there was a, a act known as doctrine of laps. If you have doctrine of laps, if you don't have a male descendant to the throne, so the government used to take over the entire kingdom. So that happened in Bastar. But there was a huge conflict, or you can say a outfire of the tribal started, you know, hating the British and then saying that that cannot happen. So we had a girl, there was only one baby girl. So if she was crowned, she was the only Hindu Sashika crowned as the Maharani Master. So she was crowned at a very young age and her father was poisoned by the Britishers. So they wanted to take over Master. But it was the goddess's blessing that you know, she was crowned as the Maharani Master. And my mother, Rudrama Devi's you know, reincarnation, because she, she made a lot of contribution to Master. Like connecting the Master to the entire world by preaching. From the Hyderabad side, from Raipur side, we had the Ravati, the entire pool was built by her. The Dantishwari temple, you know, the temple which are next to the ruins. So then she tried to build up every place. The old temples of all the goddesses were re you know, re established and re worshipped by her. Then what the major, major thing what she did was the health facility. And it was known as the, as the first health facility pre independence. I think 19 or 19 years they established it and started working. A lot of people used to come from that and we had a board also. So in her the nothing cuts Buster from it. Yes. So she used to have these board hospitals and, and the doctors used to go on the board and treat the people on the soul of the entire place, of the entire route. Of, so that has been a very big contribution of her. And we established the girls primary school here. It was established before independence. So we had an independent thing about the girls here that they can also get study here. So that school was still established and still, still in Jagadpur only. So we had, you know, we established the people in health, education. So we were always pro people and wanted them to become bigger in life. So that was Maharani Sahib's very big contribution. And secondly, she did was the mapping of the city of Jagadpur. Jagadpur does not exist. In certain era, you see that. Jagdhar could not write it, but Buster village existed because we had a fort there. So this entire city is known as immigrant city, when we got people from different places. So they all came and established here and we gave them land, we gave them properties, we gave them agricultural land. So still they are enjoying the property which was as a gift to them, because they came and served our people. So that's why the entire people put them by Maharaj. And her contribution was that she established, known as court of law. 
the court of law established by her and she was the person who used to give criminals you know, the dead warrant it was given by her and she had stamp papers, we had our own currency this was all done by Manak Prabhu Kumari Devi Nadara and she passed away at a very young age and it was again done by the Britishers they cut her, cut her death at uh, London she had appendix and she cut her, they cut her wings and she fled to death in London and when she died her ashes had to come to us so that's why the airport was built here so that is how the history of Manak Prabhu Kumari at a very young age she established so many things I think she was below 30 she passed away Maharaj, so Maharaj, we have uh, heard that Maharani Kapoorpa has uh, even given death sentence, death sentences to the criminals. Is it uh, true? Yeah, yes, we have, we have the records of it also. So many criminals which have done wrong to the people and it was established that they were wrong. So she had given that death warrants also. So she was the last, I think, after her independence came up. Maharaj, uh, Maharaja Pradeep Mukherjee, Pradeep Chandra Panjadevji, who is known as the God of Father Losses. Even in, the, in his book, he has written that I Pradeep the God of Father Losses. So, uh, what is the reason for uh, I mean, his activities and what he has done for the public? He has done many things for the public because the public that time it was the era when there was the independence and there was the you know, British regime. And he also said he has faced a lot of problems with the British upcoming because his mother, that is Maharaj Prophet Kumar, he passed away at the age and he was basically assigned to a British resident. So they created a lot of problems for him and he never had a mother to take care of him. He was always with the British. But he always thought about the people after coming back from his studies from abroad. So he came back and then he thought that if we need to fight for the people. So he established this event, he went to all the villages, made people. But Britishers, as well as the that type of race, never liked it because he was so popular. He used to take care of people and help them in money, finances, properties, lot of things he did. So that was a lot of you know, favor he did to the public. And as well as he worshipped Dantheshwari like a mother. And she used to bless him. And a lot of places he established his things. And he has reached to the places which we can't reach now by cars. He has reached them and met their people. And he was one of the person who I can say he was the most awful person in the family in, in our era in which but he was my grandfather like so we know him that he has been uh, you know, as aspiring as well as he was the person who contributed to the personal development he always felt that we need to contribute to personal development he always opposed government of uh, India that then the Congress regime so that the Adivasi rights are taken care of a lot of things he did and that is why he became so popular in Muslim. And first, second thing is that he always was very religious. So he made it a point that all the religious aspect of Muslim should run as it was running in the state times. So that all the god and goddesses, Adivasis, or on the praises of entire Muslim, should be worshipped as it was done in the, the, the time of the kingdom. So that is what made him so popular. And unfortunately, when he becomes so popular, the government does not. Agrees or digested. So that was the major thing that you know, they killed him. Otherwise, politically, it was very sound. Maharaj, can you tell us about the seven forts which are in Master State? Yes, seven forts in Master State. When we came back from Varangal, the first was where we established the Tevada. So we stayed there. That was a small palace. We used to be the entry of the city war and everything. Then from there we went to Badigoda. We established there, but because of the water shortage, we left there. The third one we established it in Manada. Manada is very close to Basar. But again there was a shortage of the army, water, food, grains. Then we shifted from there to one place called Uvisa. We had a war in Uvisa, we established in Korapur. That was the fourth palace which was established by the king. And then we demolished it and gave it to the king that still paid to the travels. And the fifth one we established it in Basar, which is right now also there, that was known as the fort, the Kila. So that was there and still, you know, we don't go there, but that was also destroyed and given it to the people. So the kingdom we should establish from there. Then the sixth came into the existence was basically Basar, where we live right now. This was the sixth palace developed by the Mahajans. So that, you know, that was the residential palace of the king. And it was established. 1400, but we had small small palaces which the king used to stay, so it took time to develop this. 
So then there was the six palace and the seventh palace which was there it is known as Sargipan Forest. So that is again a palace which was there for the king. So that was the palace which was basically given to the king as the as the accommodation for the, the treatment of as an official palace. There were two palaces. One was the residential palace in Jamtapur and there was Sargipan Palace, which was basically done for the official you know, meetings. Or camp of office, 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 office and where the people came from and stayed. So that was like these were the seven palaces which was owned by the Vastar Maki. And right now we, we have the, these two palaces with us, that is Vastar Palace which we have to be And second, sir, we, want, we have these two places with us. Maharaja, I mean, uh, Pradeep <coughs> Sir Maharaja has written so many books. So, can you tell us about the some books he has written? <coughs> so many books he has written. One is uh, Naughty Buddha Tarangri. Because when he was there in 1962, there was a there was a fire between the tribals and there was a fight between them and there was a fire of fires and all that between the tribals and the police. That happened in Nandigura. So he wrote a book on the Nandigura Tarangi and when he was jailed at that time in the nursing nursing book, nursing bed, he was jailed in nursing bed in the village. The second book he took, the I Pramit the Yoguru. So he is going to mark of it. Then the fourth book which we have is the book is known as I Pravid the Adivasi God. That's what the fourth book. Fifth book he wrote was like, you know, the history of Asar. So that book is there. So there are five, six books which are still to be established. But five books we have with us. So these books are basically written directly by him. And the I Pravid the Adivasi God makes clear about the government of India is working and everything, how it happened that time and what were the problems with the government and the royalty was the were facing with each other. And it was a genuine problem because they were supporting the travels and they were not. So that was a lot of you know things which came up in the in the, in the books and that is why it is clear on that books if you read it. Maharaja, many corporate companies are trying to uh, encourage the I mean, uh, tribal uh, areas and uh, other things. So how we are going to stop them and how we are going to protect the tribals? We are trying to protect the tribals as you know that the Prime Minister and the we have we always like to enter to on these things. He's been very clear on this, that you know we will never establish such a thing without the permission of the local tribals and as well as the grounds of us. If the grounds of a government then only one thing can move on. Otherwise we are not trying to establish certain things which are not basically there. So it is very important to the tribals that you know we have to Care of them and uh, anything which is there in Bastard that has to be taken care of, taking consideration of the tribal's first, and then only we move on it, otherwise, we will not. Maharaja, as in Varanga, uh, your forefathers lived in Varanga, so there is a uh, there is a rule called Triple T Farm now. The same way, I mean, uh, in Bastard Kaptias also, they have implemented the same thing. So, can you tell about the Triple T which is implemented here? Say Buster, we have only one thing which you can see in the city. Like I can tell you the example of the city is at Jindapur. We have that Basar. It is 300 acres of man-made, you know, then the basic thing that as you said, seven numbers. So we have seven wells inside. That's what we told to me by the ancestral. That there are seven wells and there's a Shiv temple. So that basically gives water to the uh, to the public. As well as earlier it was used for irrigation facilities. But now it has not been used. Now there are a lot of different pipelines for that. That has been preserved right now by the government. That was again a, a TTT project, like a temple was there and agriculture was taken care of. And the town was also benefited by the water because the water supply was directly connected to the drought. So then the water supply was there and as well as when there was a there was outbreak of water, because there was flow of the water is higher. So that used to over overflow the water goes to the drought. That was a huge thing with the Buster family there, and that is the connection which you can see. The triple T the connection between the Varanga and the Buster state. Maharaja, uh, as triple T, I mean, Varanga Kaktias are related to the number seven. So, do you have any relation with the number seven? There are many things I have seen that my mobile numbers are seven. So, my palaces are seven. So, we have you know, a lot of rituals which are done, like you know, it's, it's basically on the seven numbers only. So, there are a lot of things which I feel is connected, and if you see the, you know, the triple D connection is also there. Maharaja Ji, Pravin Chandra Ji, written seven books. Seven books, in and uh, 
the inscription which are in uh, our Buster State is 7 and the former districts which are in uh, Buster State is also uh, 7 and the present variable uh, division is divided into 7 districts so like that we have uh, many relations with the numbers uh, there are many, many, I think you can find out on a small detail, there are many so basically it's a very important thing that you know there is one you know, saying that history repeats itself so you can see that they are connecting the, you know, the, the, dot, the dots are getting connected and we will find out that you know, there are a lot of things which will be replica of the Vargan and Buster and it was always that the Vargan people also respected the king because they did so much things and Buster also did the same the people always respected him because they always contributed to the public and that is why we are important because to help people and you know, upbring their lifestyle so that they are basically not you know, left over in this modern era they are with us and they are competing with this 21st you know, century. Maharaj, how you are trying to protect the grand legacy of Kakathias and the great uh, heritage given by our uh, It is not that easy, it's difficult because as you know that we are in democracy and we are also in the of democracy. People have never heard about it. The young era, like I am talking about the era about the people right now has been class say 5 or 6 or maybe class 1 or 2. They have never known about the kings and queens. They have always seen the, the let's say, the episodes, episodes in the life of the Vivekananda. Uh, there are a lot of episodes there on Maharaj, you know, Shivaji Rade, or different kingdoms of Prithira Chama, Shivji. So they are, there is basically something known as an aura in their minds of the children right now, that the kings must be wearing their crown sitting every day. So there are a lot of things which they have not seen it. So it's very difficult to maintain the old and the new. So we are trying to do that by establishing that, that the, the custom traditions, whichever can be the custom tradition all over the country, it should be maintained and should be taken further because when there was nothing, there was no modern era, nothing, the sciences were not there. That time also we had built up buildings. The sciences were not there, then also we built up other than architects. But we built up temples which were more beautiful than that today's temple. <laughs> the buildings which were built that time still exists. And if you talk about a modern architectural building, they say that the validity is for 100 years or 40 years or 50 years. But the architects which did this palace, I think it's maybe 4 500 years ago, and there's nothing gone wrong with the palace because the architecture, everything was so good. I think they were more modern than today's world. They used to, you know, there were no clothing. There was no cooking, but people were very smart and because they were very close to the nature and they should build up some technology which used to be nature friendly and then help to survive in all the atmospheres and temperatures. So this is why it is very important that the young children of today's world to know that that you know we need to preserve it and take it further so that our coming future generation can also see it and feel that Buster history is bigger than the British era or the Chhattisgarh history is bigger than Buster or Indian history is bigger than the British or Mughal empires. Maharaja, this place is land for the many kinds of tribals, English English people and uh, from the last 4000 or 5000 years they are, they are performing a rituals for megalithic rituals I mean uh, megalithic uh, culture uh, things so, and due, due to the modernization, that kind of uh, uh, rituals are not happening now. So, how do we protect that kind of uh, heritage? See, we need to first get people aware about it. So, we start from one or two villages and then start going further. So, because if we don't establish it from one or two villages, they will not know the importance. The day people start knowing that this is my right and this is my responsibility to take it. Accordingly, people start absorbing it and thinking that this is my right to do every household in our village will start you know, absorbing it and taking it further and if you don't start doing it from one village and just do it by phone call this is not happening because you need to do it practically on the field so that people come to understand that yes this is the way it has to be done and then it can be taken further ahead and then it can be established in the entire area so that it becomes a part of their life this is how we can establish. So, Maharaja, this palace, the Vasta Palace is known as a living museum because uh, all the uh, interior and all the artifacts is known as a museum. So, do you have any plan of uh, renovating or? Yeah, we are trying to do that. We are trying to renovate a part of the palace to 
established that the old buggies and the bullock carts and all these things are there. So we are trying to preserve it and get it to display so that I can have certain part of the Paradigma Prime Museum. The people can some come and see that, like the coins also, the stamps of my grandmother, my grandmother, my grandmother, my and the holding sphere given, the jail where it was. So they should do feel the history. And they can walk down the history and then they can understand that what Master has given to the Master people. And it was only for the people which we have been serving. And we have always served as a, you know, we are never the manager. We have always served as one of the person who takes care of the family and takes care of them. We always kept the people first and then us. That has been establishment in the family. We are still following the same legacy. Maharaja, with a great modesty, you are telling that you are a common man, but you are not a common man, Maharaja. Thousands of people treat you as a god. Uh, in your word, I can say demi god. So, no, no one in India can get, uh, get that kind of, uh, I mean, uh, that kind of respect. So, what do you think about it? I say it's like saying god or demi god. It's basically I'm a human being. I was born and I died. Gods cannot die. They are, they are always there. So we, I can say that it's a big responsibility as I told you earlier also. And it's a, it's a responsibility which is tedious and you have to do it every day to help our people because there are problems that in every household. In every place there is a problem. There is a problem in every relationship in today's world. So that's why it is known as a Kaliyuk. It is not Satyam, it is a Kaliyuk. So you, know, you cannot treat yourself as something. But I think that it's a responsibility and I am willing to take it further to the study that I came back. And I am taking care of my people and you know, respecting them and giving their rights. Like the water supply and everything. And it's always thankful to the person that I managed to because he's always helped us whenever we have come up with some problems of us. Like for example, one problem which I've been I've been talking with him regularly on water supply because earlier they used to only do the pumps, one place and they should the water and go to different houses. Now we are taking out the rule that you know, every household of the country, that is the same thing, that every household of every place, every village, and every house and village should have their own water supply. So this is how you contribute to the people, and it is very thankful to them, as well as I've been thinking to how can we give them the basic requirement of life, driving people, school, shelter, clothing. These are something which needs to be done because now we are in an era that everyone needs a home. And due to climatic changes also. Earlier we never had this type of climates. Yes. Now climates are changing, so we need people to have a good house, a good place to live in, at least electricity should be there. So that they are taken care of and they are safe. When they are in jungle also they are safe from everything. So that is why it is very important to you know not you know respect and you know don't be too much uh, ego state of why people respect it is not because they are respecting me, and they are respecting the throne of us, the state, which I am setting up. So it is not a responsibility on my head to take care of my people, and as well as take it further, so that our coming generation should be respected and they should be loved by the people. And I should be up to their mark, and it is very difficult, because you can't satisfy your own mother. Yes, sir. You can't satisfy your own sister or mother. How can you satisfy the entire country, or entire master state, or entire Vidhan Sabha area, or those of but we need to try and continue this strike, like in one day, God, you know, my Nathashwini blesses us. So one should take it further after that. I think this is the only reason for uh, your entry into the politics after 15 years. Yeah, I think I was in a country in because we had our own party, in this Maharaja party, which was the Maharaj form. And we had a lot of MLAs, started with one, then there were four, then five, then eleven. We had a lot of MLAs from the palace itself. Then we never get into politics. But in uh, 2013, I entered politics. The reason is that I wanted to help our people because politics is the only place, or you can say, only uh, stage from where you can help your people directly. Direct. And you can you know, provide them with a lot of facilities like health facilities, you know, housing facilities, water facilities, electricity. These are a lot of things which are driving people to somewhere they will not be able to get. It. But it is the field where we can, I can help people. And we poor people, it can travel, it can not travel. But you can help all the people as our ancestors did. What our ancestors did was the same thing which political people do. It's like giving up a budget. 
the budget is sent to the state. The state a lot of the budget. That is what we want to help them to help the youth also. Because youth is nothing which changes the dimension of a state or country or village. So we need to, you know, scale the people of the youth to come up with a vision to make Basta more established by keeping the tradition customs intact. And as well as using the modern equipments or you know, the necessities or the devices or any modern equipments. So that we try to uplift the old tradition and customs so that it should be known to the entire world. As well as try to make a model but be traditional. How I'm saying it because if you see South, the youth always are looking. Yes. They never wear bad shirts because they make that you might be a push like this. So <coughs> that has to be embodied by the people of Asta because we are a different country, different cities and different states and different different places have different eating habits, drinking habits, clothing are different. So if we identify by them, then only the youth are the people who can take it as a you know, uh, a stand because the youth are the people who destroy the history. And youth can only establish a history. So they are the people who we try to focus on so that they can be established the history of Asta. So that we can have our communities there, people can identify where they go, that we know the South people. Yes, they will look So we know that these are from South South. Their, their identity should be very much clear. So we are working on all these sectors and political field is only field from where we can do these things. Yes. And that is the reason we have established an organization named uh, Paris yes. you know, yeah, for the social development. Yes. Uh, so can you, can you tell us uh, some programs which were done under the Paris? Paris is a very really good thing. Like, you know, there were certain uh, places when Dr. Ramansindi was our chief minister, I was serving as a taking care of the uh, UI or the youth commission. So we we said that there were certain employees, third and fourth grade employees. They were never become permanent. So we fought this thing with the with the probability as police and as well as respected him and thank you to the chief minister that day. He decided that we will make them permanent. So people who were earning five thousand rupees they started earning twenty five thousand rupees. The people who served for ten years and twenty years they will be given ten to twelve thousand. They started getting 50,000 in the city. So there are a lot of things which we established. And Pravis is a work for the re-establishment of the religious things. Like I work for the people like if we go to the different villages for re-establishing or restoring the entire old temples, which have been destroyed not by anyone, but basically by the nature. Yes. So we're trying to re-establish and restore it. So that function goes on. So that time of Kansin the Chief Minister, he gave us one one for every temple. One as Devuri. Devuri is one in the temple, which is the main Devuri. So that was established by the Pravis and we started the movement and slowly, slowly, Comrade also identified it. So we are doing a lot of things, restoring the wells, the wells which are basically become absolute. So we are restoring it. So slowly, slowly, we are doing it in many segments of life so that you know, we don't leave over anything and we get all these things which were basically perishing or finished or absolute, become absolute, don't leave over it. We are trying to be established in the reason. Maharaja, uh, like uh, you have earlier said, Varangal and Kakatiya, 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 Sister State, we can say. So, how we are going to uh, connect these uh, two uh, states? We will connect it because Buster people know, a lot of people know that we came back from Varangal and we were talking. But people from Varangal, from, from they, they are not sure about it. So there are a lot of historians and there are a lot of things because everybody likes in their own aspect and I respect that also. But we need to find out the exact, you know, the truth behind the entire history. And I think because budget notification of the rulers cannot be long from it has to be historically found and only people can buy it. So budget notifications we have. If you see the uh, the stone inscriptions, I think it's in ancient Telugu also. Yes. So that has also given very clear that we came back from. So there are a lot of authenticated records stating that we came from Varangal. But we respected the people of Basta from you know centuries. There has never been a conflict between the ruler and the subjects in so many years. And because we have been always fighting for their rights. And that has been very clear in the Varangal also. Yes. The Varangal authority always fought for the people's rights. So they, they made this, you know, the well, the TTT thing. Yes. And they made a lot of temples also, the thousand pillar temples and, you know, the big, big temples. And I think one of the temples has been given a world heritage site. Tamapata. Tamapata temples. So these are all 
were built by my ancestors. So it has been an honor that you know, my ancestors have been so much vision and they have brought so much of a vision that today's world also recognizes their effort and you know to worship our own God and goddesses. It is a it's a very you know, a welcome thing for us like you know, sit on the throne, which is basically right now a traditional throne which is on. So it's a big responsibility and a person takes it as a privilege, but it comes with a lot of responsibility. Maharaja, I mean, uh, your ancestors built Ramapha Temple, which got uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site recently tagged. So, in the same way, Bastar Dasar also a uh, vibrant and uh, unique uh, festival in total India. So, how are you going to promote in a worldwide? We are going to do it. We are trying to follow the, you know, the international media, maybe not this year, maybe next year, or maybe because of this whole pandemic, we can't say it was one or two years. But after that, we are trying that you know, the, the international media should come and see it because they are the people who can promote it. And our national media also don't tell any public. They can come and you know, promote it in a higher way. And then we want that it should come up in the UNESCO. UNESCO mm -hmm. event should come up in the calendar year. So that you know, it becomes a place where people can come and visit Pastor and they can see a lot of tourism sites, a lot of temple sites, a lot of scenic views. So we have, Pastor is full of opportunity for people that come and explore it. And they can see the different type of culture. The living culture of the land, the dances are there, the songs are different, the different tribal languages are there, the food is different. So a lot of things one can come and explore in Pastor. So that can only be done when it comes under the world map of UNESCO and stating that this is world event that people can come and you know, see this site. And that will happen when you know, we all contribute, like the local media as well as the national media and the international media, and we take it further. And it has been an honor that you know, we have also been writing to the Prime Minister, he has also been concerned about it. So we will take it to a further because of this whole pandemic, it is all we need to believe in. Yes. So, for that Maharaja, you have learned so many languages to go. just talk to the tribalists. So, how many languages can you speak? Yeah, I speak many languages, like 18 languages. 18? 18. 18 languages, and that becomes like around 5 6 other dialects of Asana. So, and the other English, Hindi, Sanskrit. So, there are a lot of uh, languages, you know, we are speaking because of Nepali, a lot of the book is in Nepali, so we started. So, you know, it has been uh, in my was my great grandmother, Pravin Maharaj, like Prasunraj, and my mother is from Gujarat. So, so, we started learning this language inside the house, because they started talking in Rajasthan, we understand Rajasthan. Then, slowly, slowly, we invite that languages. So, and I was very, I love to learn languages also. Speaking language, at least I should know. I can't read it. So. But I can at least communicate with people. So, that has been one of my, you know, languages and been an hobby sort of a thing that you know I love the way also. My my all both the sisters, probably my dad's one of the sister and my father's own sister. They both married in Buddhism. So I started in Buddhism like that. That Buddhism. is the reason a bunch names. Yeah, that's the rest of from our family. Okay. It has basically come out from a village. So again my sisters which came out of that Buddhism. So you know like that we have started getting to languages and this is how I've learned it. By going to different states, also I you know, invite, then I slowly, slowly learn it. At least the speaking languages I can learn. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaja, for your valuable time and uh, so much input you have given. And this interview may be helpful in connecting the roads between Vastar uh, Kaktias and Varangal Kaktias. <laughs>